my mother in law invited herself to thanksgiving to meet a newborn went exactly as expected a little background i gave birth 2 weeks early via emergency c section 6 weeks ago mother in law and father in law live in a different state and have not met baby boy yet because all parties agreed early in pregnancy that giving me a few weeks to recover and bond with baby was important also it's rsv season so i wanted a little time before having out of town visitors mother in law has routinely complained that being left out of our lives because we live in my home state husband was the one who said he had never moved back to his home state and has never seemed to particularly like me might be some racism might just be because dear husband is an only child and i stole him away i don't know they didn't ask us about dates before booking the trip he invited herself to thanksgiving dinner at my parents home which means we had to host an actual thanksgiving which we are not planning on since i have your little newborn and never asked my parents about it either I didn't offer to come help my mom and i cook or to bring food sat at the kitchen island watching us do everything mother in law got angry about being given a list of rules for visiting literally just don't kiss the baby wash your hands visit one or two hours increments because i don't need a list to know that and it feels like we don't trust her mother in law proceeds to kiss the baby and try to grab him without washing hands then got pissy with me because i snapped at her to back off first time they held him they waited till i was occupied and took the baby away into a different room i had to send my husband to bring them back my mom then overheard mother in law whispering my son my baby and you looked to him while holding him like what in the past when i have read some of this post i thought people were exaggerating because what kind of person would do this stuff I never imagined that an actual real life person would act like this. Proud of myself for cutting her off and standing firm in boundaries after the first incident but but holy sick that's just no chance of me doing another holiday with these people. Solution I strongly encourage you to set boundaries now as always it's super important for this to come from your husband as it's his mother in my cases i have always stood my ground and spoken my mind and we are still having issues i think it's always the best to straight forward so there's nothing lost in translation i'm sorry you're dealing with this but congrats on the little one story 2 7 years ago i lived in an old house that was just inside the wrong side of the tracks If you know what I mean but it was affordable we had a number of few trees and for the most part being right on the edge of our neighbors were quite looked out of each other the house was on a corner lot with a detaching garage on the side the garage looked like crap the driveway was sunken in about a foot below the level of grass and curb but it was still obviously a driveway as you know we parked our car there two groups of people would regularly block the driveway even if our car was parked there the people going out the catholic church across the street I wish this was a story about getting back at them but really they were just hell on earth to be neighbors towards and the guest of the drug dealer next door on the side of the driveway was on younger guy maybe mid 20s living with his grandma growing weed in the backyard honestly i don't care leave me alone and i will leave you alone at least his guest would leave quickly or just move if i went outside the car and like the church deal holds but one night i get home and there is a party going on and my driveway is blocked i honk a few times no one comes my heart is shit anyway so i just say fuck it i want to get inside and go to bed so i drive over the curb across the grass and then three point park in my driveway drug dealer guy comes over cursing at me claiming i almost hit the track I was not even close I point to the dash cam and he calls me a few names and leaves. Truck gets moved quickly. Next day, I buy a burner phone. Many of his guests are from local businesses with the business names and number on the truck. Plumbers, landscapers, things like that. Vehicles that don't look out of place sitting 
park at a random in the neighborhood. Every time I saw one of them park nearby, I could see pretty well from one of the backyard windows, but it would be hard for them to see from the street, blocking my driveway or not. I called the number I had claimed to be a member of the church, monitoring their cameras and just making sure they are working on a house nearby, because I would not want them to get caught up in the drug setting. About half the time, I had been speaking to someone directly in the vehicle and they would quickly drive away even if a drug dealer cop was walking out. Sometimes, I had get a receptionist who would be confused as to why their truck was there, but it would still move quickly. After about a month of this and maybe 20 calls, none of the neighbor's guests parked in front of my driveway again. He met them around the opposite corner away from the church cameras. For those thinking I should have called the cops, we literally had a sheriff substation around the other corner, 600 feet walk away. They didn't even care and I'm pretty sure the neighbors sold to cops too. They were just smart enough to not be obvious about it. My opinion about this is, I like that you didn't actually get him in trouble, just creatively solve the problem on your own. Well done. When police can't help, God's cameras are the salvation. Story 3 Am I wrong for telling my girlfriend that we can't afford for me to be her sugar daddy? My girlfriend is absolutely beautiful and almost of her friends are also physically attractive women as well and they like to party with the rich man they met. My girlfriend and I have been together for a couple of years. I make a decent living but I am not NB rich. I don't have trust fund. I am not tech millionaire. I just make a very good salary and bonuses, enough to have paid off a good portion of my house and to have graduated without debt. I want to retire young enough to enjoy my life so I invest and save most of my money. Not all, I am still enjoying my life now, I am taking us to an all inclusive in Jamaica for New Year's, but she is jealous of her friends, they get lavish gifts and they go out for dinner all the time. She loves me and we have plans for the future but she keeps bringing up all the things her friends get from their make admirers. I finally snapped and said that I could not afford to be a sugar daddy. She said her friends are not like that. So, so I pointed out that they literally do not make enough money to support lifestyles they have. I pointed out that one of them drives a 100k Lexus and she worked part time at restaurants as a hostess. She says that I am calling her friends ex-workers, which I would not do and not judging them. So I asked her to explain how her friends afford dinner out at very expensive restaurants while earning minimum wage in some cases. Now she thinks I am an a-hole for making what I feel are observations. She asked me if I consider her that way because I pay for everything and I earn 6x or what she does. I told her no that I am proud to have a teacher for a girlfriend, but she is still sulking. My opinion, in my opinion about this is, you have two choices, sit down with her and have an adult conversation that although she may be jealous of all the gifts her friends get, you do not, cannot get her all the same things. If you are paying for almost all the luxuries, bills or whatever, you get a big say on what luxuries are enjoyed or you can end the relationship. She sounds a bit immature. 